My next guest takes on Ruslan Habilov at UFC 206 on December 10th. Jason Sago joins me here on the program. Jason, how's it going? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Appreciate you joining me here on this uh, beautiful Sunday here in Toronto. And uh, the last time we saw you, Jason, I uh, was at UFC Ottawa back in June. Um, how was the rest of your summer? What did you get up to? It was awesome. It was uh, nice to have a fight in the summer, and then I could enjoy it after the fight. So living in PEI, there's great spots to go, lots of cool beaches. So just, just enjoyed the rest of my summer, and now I'm getting ready for the next one on December 10th. Absolutely. Let's talk about your last fight, though. A split decision win over Leandro Silva at UFC Fight Night 89. Uh, first off, what was it like competing for the UFC in Ontario for the very first time? It was awesome, you know, to fight. Well, in Ontario, you know, in Ottawa, to come down, it's not too far away from where I uh, was born around Toronto. So I had uh, some friends and family come up to support. So that was awesome. It was a, a huge venue. I think there was over 10,000 people there. And it was an awesome event. It was really well run. And uh, actually, when we were leading up to like the walkouts to go into uh, the octagon, you had to cross a massive football field. And it was just kind of a surreal experience to, to compete there. Yeah, and I don't know if you saw, I was I was there covering the event. We actually got to sit on the field uh, for the yeah. media area, uh, which yeah. was kind of cool. I've never experienced that before. And uh, as someone who watches CFL football, I thought that was kind of neat to be able to, you know, sit on the same pitch where the Red Blacks are playing. I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. So. Yeah, it was a really cool walkout. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Um, how, were you satisfied with your performance in that fight? I mean, it was a split decision, but you ended up coming out with the win again and, you know, got a bit of a winning streak going here. Yeah, definitely. I was happy to come out on the winning end of uh, that fight. I know it was a close fight. Leandro was a super tough guy. He was uh, 19 wins, I think two losses at the time. And uh, he actually fought. Uh, he had a couple uh, wins at 170 before, too. So he was coming down from 170 to compete at 155. And black belt Brazilian jiu-jitsu, a high-level striker. And he was a southpaw. So it was a tough fight. I knew that going into it. But we trained hard. We were uh, well-prepared. And thankfully, it didn't take too, too much damage in the fight. And I came out on top. Now, did you go right back to PEI after the fight, or did you get a bit of time to spend in Ottawa after the matchup? I stuck around for a, a few days, actually, and then I went back to uh, Ontario a little bit just to hang out with friends and family. So it's nice uh, competing uh, you know, locally in Ontario, so you could always go and see your friends and family after, and that's what I plan on doing after this fight as well. So now here you are again, UFC 206. Uh, you mentioned uh, being close to where you're from. Now you're actually fighting in Toronto. Um, how happy were you uh, to be added to this card uh, as someone who you know was born and raised here? Oh, super stoked. You know, it's going to have just tons of people. A lot of people have just been messaging me. Guys, I don't have any tickets, so you've got to go see Ticketmaster if you want the tickets. Uh, just go to Ticketmaster.ca if you're looking for tickets. They, they're not sold out, so you can still grab some tickets. Uh, uh, it's just a, a really good card. You know, fortunately, we lost the main event, uh, Daniel Cormier. I think he just pulled out recently due to an, an injury, but uh, I think Max Holloway and Anthony Pettis are now fighting for the interim title, I believe. Yeah, the interim interim. I mean, it's weird because like they they basically they promoted Jose Aldo to featherweight champion. They stripped McGregor, and now uh, Holloway and Pettis are fighting for an interim title. Which I I guess I get because you know they're trying to get more people to buy the pay per view with it being a title fight. But yeah. kind of weird too. This you know this is the second time Aldo's been promoted uh, to champion without uh, having to do anything. Because remember he's the fight. WBC <laughs> champ. And uh, he's moving up there. But anyways, let's, let's talk about you, though. Uh, this fight against Habilov, a uh, pretty big name. A lot of people are familiar with him. You know, he fought Ben Henderson. I mean, he's a guy that's been around the game for quite some time. How, does, how do you sort of see yourself matching up against him? I think it's going to be a, a fun matchup, you know. Obviously, uh, I feel like I'm making that transition to uh, more striking in my fights, and you saw a little bit of that during the uh, the last fight with Silva. You know, there was only a, the first round really where we hit the ground, and the rest of the fight, uh, rounds two and three, were all stand up. And I'm starting to make that transition, just becoming as comfortable I am on the ground, but transitioning that to the stand up world as well. So we've been working hard on that, you know, and it's starting to come together, and just want to be able to show that in, in my fight. And uh, who are some of the people helping you get ready for this matchup? Oh, we've got an awesome te team here in PEI. It's uh, headed by our, our coach, Paul Abel. He runs uh, Wolfren MMA. And you know, obviously know my main training partner, uh, Matt McGrath. McGrath. Yep. Matt McGrath. We've got Sean Wallace, uh, Lance Campbell, Morgan. Uh, Lenny Wheeler just came back. He's back for the rest of the camp. Uh, Matt DeRoche. Uh, Nathan, uh, Chris White's another black belt that's just moved here from Halifax. So lots of uh, stellar guys around my weight class, too, to train with. So very, very happy with the training here. 
Yeah, and those who don't know, Lenny Wheeler's a guy who's pretty much on the cusp of uh, hopefully getting a UFC shot. He's on that. Is it the unified card he's on? I always forget if because there's the Triumph and the unified card coming up. Yeah, uh, I know he's fighting a week after after mine, and I believe it's out west. And yeah, keep your eyes on him. He's a very exciting uh, fighter to watch. I think he's probably one of the best strikers in Canada, and he he has it all too. He can wrestle, he can do jujitsu, so he's definitely got a huge potential. And you're going to see that uh, week after my fight. Um, how's the cut to lightweight going? And I should preface this by saying that uh, in Canada, our Thanksgiving was a while back, so yeah. we're not having any temptation with like turkey and gravy and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, luckily, I have uh, an awesome girlfriend here, Rachel. She's always uh, kind of handling my, my meal prep and just healthy salads, you know, especially these last two weeks before the fight. You really got to just tighten up the, the diet and make sure you're not having any uh, sweet treats, no chocolate cake, nothing like that, no heavy turkey. So just uh, it's on track. You know, I'm, I'm hitting about 171 right now. And that's usually where, where I should be in the morning. So I'm going to make my way down to uh, 155. And hopefully by the time I get to Toronto, I'll weigh around 167. Excellent. Uh, what's going to be the first uh, cheat meal post fight? Like you mentioned, chocolate cake. Are you just going to like head out, you know, out of the arena, just race out of there and grab? A <laughs> I'm cake just going to indulge. Yeah, I think uh, probably some buffet style, like just just anything and everything. You know, uh, carrot cake, ice cream, some pizza, pasta, all, all that. I'll be uh, I'll be jumping up weight classes pretty soon after the fight. So yeah, I'd like to I'd like to enjoy myself. You know, I like to train hard, work hard, but when it's time to relax, just take it easy. Where do you feel like a win over Habula puts you in the division? I mentioned he's a pretty big name. I would imagine that kind of propels you up pretty high in the division. Yeah, I believe he has six wins in the UFC and uh, two losses, so he is ranked fairly high up there. He's a former uh, world combat Sambo champion, so it's cool just to get a win over a former champion in combat Sambo, so looking forward to that. Um, I think it would, it would definitely uh, increase my rankings uh, significantly. I think it would put me, put me up pretty, pretty high. And I know you're not looking past your opponent, but I'm assuming the plan after this is to try and get on that Halifax card. Or you, I mean, when we talked uh, back in March, you said you kind of, you know, you, you want to travel a little bit. So I don't know, what what's sort of the, the best scenario for you? Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, being so close to home, I'd love to get on that Halifax card. And, you know, seeing how this fight goes, if I'm, you know, relatively injury free, I'm going to fight on that Halifax card. You know, I don't think there's any other UFC fighters in the Maritimes right now. I believe I'm the only one in Atlantic Canada that's uh, on the UFC roster, so I'd love to get on that card. I think the only exception, well, you're, you're right about that, actually. I was going to say Ryan Janes, I believe, was born um, in, in the Maritimes, but uh, he lives in BC now. So, yeah, you're, you're the only authentic one. Let's put it that yeah. way. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. When, when um, is that uh, Halifax card, by the way? Oh, that... uh, man, I, 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 I'd have to look it up. I can't remember off the top of my head. I, I think it's either January or February. February I, I was... 14th, I think. I yeah. <laughs> They announced it when I was uh, covering the New York card, so I never really got around to actually seeing because they just announced the card. They never said who was going to be on it. Or yeah, so as long as you know I don't sustain any like serious injuries, I should be good to go for that card. Excellent. All right, December tenth. What's your prediction for this fight? How do you see this one ending? I see my hand being raised. I think it's going to be uh, like one of those long, grueling fights. You know, he's a uh, strong grappling base. He's good from the clinch. In our whole camp, we worked a lot of nice uh, counter jujitsu, counter wrestling, and uh, keep it standing. Hopefully, you get to see a little bit more of my, my, my stand up and my striking to see what I can do on my feet. All right, last question for you here. Um, I, I imagine uh, you're, you're a guy who watches Netflix. I mean, most of us are up in your, here in Canada, especially when it gets kind of cold. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty stormy out on the East Coast right now. So it's just the day, and Sunday's my my chill day. So just relax, you know, go for some uh, something light like an active rest. Just going outside for a quick walk, but then chill out, chilling inside, get get warm, and stay inside, watch some Netflix. Okay, so if I log on to your Netflix account right now and it says continue watching, what am I going to see under there? What are you watching right now? Oh, uh, what do we? We just actually started a new series yesterday. I think what's it called? Pure Crime or American. something. American Crime. American Crime. It's actually really good. I, I recommend it. It's a it's a good one. And uh, I guess the series that we just finished was uh, Wentworth. You ever heard of Wentworth? I have. Yeah, I've got to get on it. I'm uh, I'm going heavy on the documentaries right now. But uh, but yeah, I'll have to check that one out. It's a it's like a female uh, prison movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard. I heard. Yeah, yeah. I've heard great things though. You're not the first person to say that. That's good. I'll tell you a good documentary though. I just uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of watching Foxcatcher right now. The uh, documentary. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. As, as a fighter, I would, I would think you'd the enjoy it. The movie was awesome. The movie was a, was a wicked movie. Is there anything like the uh, the series? Did they follow like a similar format? 
it's it's just it's well no it's it's a lot of uh just footage from wh- what actually happened like it's incredible some of the footage they were able to sort of uncover you know with uh, Schultz and, and everyone else it's uh it's pretty crazy to see what they were able to dig up but I'm about halfway through and I'm like very captivated so uh, wow so okay yeah, I'll definitely check I'll check that out and speaking of being captivated, we got to check out this fight, UFC 206, coming up here December 10th in Toronto. Uh, I'm looking forward to covering this one live again. I'm not stalking it, Jason. It just so happens you're fighting on all these uh, Canadian cards. Um, thanks for joining me here on this Sunday. Where can people get a hold of you on social media? And if you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. For sure. Definitely uh, check out my website, jasonsago.com. That's another number one. And then also the uh, Facebook fan page. And I just wanted to give a shout out to a few of the people that have supported me for a long time. Uh, Interior Concrete Coatings out of uh, Toronto. Carline Mufflers on PEI. Bam Text also on PEI. Uh, Taco Boys. They, they help fuel me. And uh, Rhythm.net. And uh, just, just a shout out to everybody uh, that's supporting me. You know, friends family, fans, just thanks a lot for the support. I'm working hard. I'm training hard. You know, I put a lot into this fight. I'm going to show it on December 10th.